Welcome. My name is George Pearson, and I run the How To Gurus channel here on YouTube. Most of the videos in my channel are short demonstrations of the different tools and techniques you'll find in various software programs. Right now I have several hundred of these quick videos available on YouTube. This video though is different. This is part of a new series of longer demonstrations that I'm doing to show you how to complete complex projects from start to finish using a variety of techniques and tools. All of the images I use in these projects are in the public domain and I've included a link to the pictures in the video description in case you want to work along using the same images. Okay, let's move on to the project. In this project we'll be taking a look at how you can take a standard sports photograph like that and make it more interesting by coming in and changing the background. Now most of this is just a standard background change, nothing really dramatic about that, but there are some tricky things about handling this. Also notice that we have increased the brightness and vibrance of the motorcycle as well, and there's a trick to doing that so you have complete control on that. And finally, if you notice the spoke areas in here on the wheels, real tricky to come in and actually cut out that background in between all of those spokes and I'll show you a special technique on how you can, uh, you can do that fairly straightforward in an easy manner. The image that we're starting with right here is a public domain image and I have the link for this picture is inside the materials description if you want to find that and then download that image yourself and use the same image that I'm using here in these demonstrations. So we're going to take this and then combine this with that background image which is also public domain. I have it kind of hiding in the background. There we go. There's that background image as well. So we'll be combining these two images together and giving us that more exciting image. The first thing we want to do is we want to get both of these into the same project file. And that's easy to do. I'll just take this background here and I have my layers open just move it over there. There we go. Layers are open. You see right there, there's your layers. And I'll grab this and just drag it onto my image. That gives me two layers in here. Motorcyclist and then that layer. So far so good. I'm going to, while I'm here, grab these control handles and I'm going to, to resize this down about like that. So it, it fits the area a little bit better. A little better. There we are. Hit the green check mark and we'll just set that in place. You can always resize later if you want to, but that gives us basically where we want to be. Now over here, we want to be able to work with this background, but I don't want to damage this just in case I need to come back to this in the future. So I'm going to make a copy of this background. If you take that, drag it up here to the new layer button. There we go. It makes a copy of that. I can now hide the original so I can always go back to that if I need to. Now I want this in front of that sunset. That's going to be our new background. We can see how that works and begin working on this pretty quickly here. Let me just get rid of this. No longer need that. There we are. And let's zoom in a little bit. Let me get this out of the way. Let's just zoom in a touch. There we go. We can begin by just coming in here and doing a big cutout of some of this background stuff. We don't need to have all of that. We want to be able to see our background in behind. So we'll start off. I'm just going to grab the polygonal lasso tool here. And I'll make a little lasso like this. You know, not really right up next to the bike, but close enough. I'm just getting rid of this X. I kind of missed right there, so I'm going to redo this one. I got too close to that wheel. Again, you don't need to be close on this. We'll be coming in closer later on. You can even come outside if you want to like that. This is just to get most of that background out of the way. I'll come in here and finish off where I started. And that gives me a selection. Now this selects the motorcyclist and not the background. I want to reverse that. So let's go up here to select, inverse. The background is now selected. You can see that with that, what are called the marching ants out there. I can now hit my delete key and just get rid of that and then deselect that. Okay, so there's the beginning. 
So we can see we have our background happening in there and then our motorcyclist. We now need to come in and do a cleaner job of getting rid of this background around the motorcyclist. And you can use whatever technique you like to work with. Personally, I like working with my basic selection tools. We have our polygon, our lasso, and the magnetic lasso. For me, the polygon works the best, but you know, use whatever tool that you are most comfortable with. It's all doing the same basic idea. We want you to just make a selection and then remove background stuff. To do this well, though, you want to zoom in on your image. Let's just do the helmet up here first. I'll be doing a little bit of this, and then I'll pause the video, finish the job up off screen, and bring the video back up again. There's no reason for you to watch me do this whole thing. It takes a little while to do it properly, but this is the basic idea. So take my lasso tool. Let me just get that back out of the way again. There we go. I like starting this outside where I can find it again. So I'll click out there. And then just come in and carefully find your edge and begin making a selection right along the edge. Now don't click too fast on this or it's going to set that selection in and you won't get what you want. So take your time, be patient on this, and just work around the image until you get a nice selection. And this is where all the patience comes in on this particular job. It really all comes down to making a good selection. The better your selection is, the better your results are going to be. You can come back in and clean your selection up a little bit if you need to and you also can if you come in too much and you actually take out part of his image you can copy that from that background that we saved okay I'm gonna click this out here and around like that so see what I'm actually doing is I'm making a selection of the background and not of the motorcyclist now come back to the beginning here's why I brought that out where I can find it come back to the beginning Notice how that cursor changes, a little, little kind of circle happens when I come next to that end. Click there, that then closes that selection. This is now selected, I can hit my delete key and delete that. Click inside and it just goes away. So I just deleted that out. I'm just up here, I left a little bit of that background showing, just a touch. And we can zoom in on that and then clean that up with another little selections go back here to our selection tool and then I can just come in real tight like this anywhere where I'm seeing that kind of an edge I can come back in and then really clean that out a lot of places it's not going to matter you won't notice anything but some spots you might see there we go hit the delete key it just cleans out that little bit of an edge now that's a, you know, a perfect selection Let's now zoom back out again. Hold the Alt key to zoom out. And there we go. So that's the basic concept. I'm going to take my time and do the selection clear around the motorcyclist. I'll be coming down around here, around the backside, over to here, and around the tires. Now the, the knobbiness on these tires this is a good use for that particular polygonal lasso tool. So I'll take my time and come around and do each one of those knobs. So this, this part will take the time down here. But I'll just come around the outside. I won't do anything on the inside yet. I'll save that for the next bit. So I'll just, I'll just do the outside, anywhere that's actually outside of the image, like I just did up there. Even you know, down here, I'll leave this in. I'll leave that in. I'll leave all this in for right now just cleaning out just the outside part of this and again this is all going to be done with just that polygonal lasso tool make a selection and then delete that selection okay at this point I'm just going to pause the video I'll go ahead and do that outside part of that selection and delete just like we just did up here at the top of the helmet and then I'll bring the video back up again when I'm at that point all right, there we go. There's the first step 
and that's to get the outside taken care of. Next we need to do the inside in here. See that's all that bit there. We're going to leave the wheels again just for a little bit. We'll do those last. So we're going to come back in. We're going to do all these little inside bits. You know, down here's a little thin bit right in here. You notice that some of these almost look like you could leave them. I mean, that little bit inside there almost matches the background. So sometimes you can leave things alone. Like I could leave that bit here and that bit right down here, and nobody would really notice those two things. I'm not going to. I'm going to go ahead and clean those out anyway, just to do it all perfectly. But sometimes you can take some shortcuts. There's a little bit up in here I'm going to ignore on this. That's not going to be a problem. But I'll, I'll get this one here and those and a little bit down here and a little bit right down there and we'll do the wheels again last. So same idea. Let's just zoom in and we'll do these areas right around the front shocks here. We'll do that first. Again using the same tool just the polygonal lasso tool right there. It's the one I happen to like the best. And same trick, make sure that you're on the right layer. There we are. And just take your time and go around the shapes properly. These straight things, of course, you can you know, do big chunks like that because they are straight. Now this cable here, this brake cable, is not straight. It has a slight curve to it. So this takes just a few clicks. Each time I click it puts in a point. I can then move on to the next point. The delete key cleans that out. Click in the middle of your selection and it goes away. Let's do this section in here. And so I'm coming in just a little bit. I'm trying to prevent any halo from happening on this. I'll show you how you can take care of that haloing problem as soon as we finish getting rid of the background we'll then take care of that halo. And there are a couple of ways of approaching that. Keep that nice and straight. There we go. And just work our way around in here. Same thing. Hit the delete key. It gets rid of that. So I'm going to leave the wheel alone for right now. We'll come back to that. I'll do the rest off screen again, but let me show you what I'll be doing. I'll take out the stuff in here in the handlebars. And as I mentioned before, I could leave that little bit in there. That probably is not going to be noticeable. That looks like it's part of this actually. But I'll go ahead and take the time and clean that out anyway, just so it's a perfect job. I think I'll leave that little bit here. And then take out this section, you know, in there, that bit. And then there's a bit down by the engine. It's a little bit showing right there. I'm going to ignore that. That should be just fine. But I'll take that bit out right there. And this little bit right in here, I'll take those out. And I think that's just about it. So that's everything else except for the two wheels. And we'll deal with those after I clean this stuff out. So again, I'll be using the polygonal lasso tool. I'll make my selection, hit the delete key, and then just take out that bit. And I'll just do you know, a, a section at a time. That one, that one, that one, that one. Just do each one of these individually. Take my time to do it. And then once I have those bits done, I'll do all that off camera. I'll then bring the video back up again, and we'll take a look at those wheels. We're now ready to work on the inside of the wheels here. Now the trick we're going to be doing on this is I don't want to be trying to come in and actually create selections around all of those spokes is that we're going to clean out the whole inner wheel area and then put new spokes in and when we're finished you won't notice the difference on that it'll look just fine so what we'll be doing here we'll also be using an eraser tool for a bit of this this area up in here, this can be done again with the standard polygonal lasso tool. Let's just get that one out of the way, get back up here on our correct layer. So we'll just clean this little bit out quickly and then we'll come back around and we'll get out 
most of that interior stuff. And same thing, you know, just create areas and then delete that area. If I'll be really picky, I can come in here and I can clean out some of this stuff in here, real small areas. These really are, are so small and the color is so close to what's in behind that these really aren't going to show. But I'll go ahead and do a couple of those anyway just to be real nice and clean about it. Okay, so there's that part. Now I could use the polygonal lasso tool and come around here carefully and make this nice selection if I wanted to. That's one way to do it. It just takes a little while to do that. Other way is to come in here and make a marquee. In this case, an elliptical marquee in the shape of that wheel. And then use the eraser tool to come in here and clean out what's inside. Now the easy way to do this is to bring in some guidelines like this and come right to the edges of that ellipse and we can use those as a guide to make our new ellipse so just like that and we're on the elliptical tool I'll grab this and pull this down right down to this other corner here so I'm going from one corner to another corner like that so it's that corner down to this corner now the ellipse on the wheel is at an angle and this ellipse is straight up and down so we need to rotate that ellipse around a little bit so let's go ahead and, and transform the selection and you can see here we now have control handles around there and I can actually grab that control handle and I can rotate that selection around until it's right where I want it plus I can come in here and actually grab these sides here, these handles, and fit this elliptical selection right inside of that wheel area. And that looks pretty good. It may be off by just, just a hair, but that's so close no one's going to notice that. I'll choose that okay. So there we go. There is our elliptical marquee. Now everything inside of this is able to be dealt with. Everything outside has now been protected with this marquee so you won't accidentally erase the tire for instance. Let's just come in here and I'm going to clear those guides out of the way. Let's zoom in a little bit. Get this thing to go away. There we are. And I'm going to erase just this side of it. We'll do this second. So I'll erase this side. Go back here to our eraser tool which is right down here. Let's check our size. That's way too large. Let's bring our size down. That's probably pretty good. I like that. I'm going to go full opacity on that. I want to do a complete erasure and get that box out of the way. And I'll just come in here and erase about into the middle in here. Again we're going to come back and do the inside second. Let's get the outside done first. We can still see where the spokes are. You can see it right, you know, right there, right there, right there, and you know, in here a little bit. So you can still see where those spokes are hiding. And I have another trick on that as well. I'll show you that once we get this taken care of. Now we get up to here, I have this edge to deal with. So we'll just leave that alone for a minute. Same thing in here, we have a couple of things happening in there. So let's kind of come around that, it won't get too tight. We'll clean those up as a final step. What I'm coming about right now is just the majority of this stuff. And just working around. Those little cleanups we'll just do with the polygonal lasso tool again. That'll be just fine for the cleanup stuff. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and show you this whole wheel. We'll finish this wheel with this cleanup and then I'll do the second tire off camera just to save you some watching time here. So I'm going to go over here now and grab the polygonal lasso tool. I want to subtract from my selection and I'll come in here and just make a little subtraction 
like that. We're okay here already, so that doesn't matter. There we go, that removed that. So I can now come back to my eraser and then just erase in this little bit here. So you can go right into that corner. Same thing in these areas over here. We have a couple things happening. I have the valve stem there and I have a little bit of a shock right back in there. And some stuff down in here. Let's go ahead and take care of that. Again, the polygonal lasso tool. I'm doing subtract on this. So I'll come right down this little bit of the suspension in here. Remember the area inside is what is able to be worked on. And then when I take this out, this will give me an or give me some protection on this. So I'll just come down that far. Doesn't need to be perfect on this back side since I'm just taking it away from that. So I can now work in here. I'll do the same thing for this valve stem. I'll just come around this. And let's come out here, then back to the beginning. Takes that out. So again, those are now protected. I can go back to my eraser tool. And I can now erase right around that. And I can erase right around this little bit. Bring it down about to there. So that was good. All that stuff is okay. Now we have the little bit around the brake in here. And again, you have two options. You can use your polygonal lasso tool and just come in here and you know carefully click around that and create that shape. Or you can use that elliptical shape technique, which I showed you previously. And if you're really, really good, you can just freehand this, just freehand erase that. But I think in this case, I'll just go back to the polygonal lasso tool. And again, I'm still on subtract. So I'm still retaining the rest of my selection in there. And with this tool, if you come in and make enough little points, and if you're careful with it, each time that cursor is stopping there, I'm, make, I'm clicking on a position. I come down here, it's going to scroll for me. There we go. So it'll auto scroll for you as well. And just take, take your time coming down. Now, when I'm doing this, I'm using a mouse. I'm not using a stylus or anything fancy like that. I'm not using a tablet. I'm just using a, a plain old mouse with a, you know, a wheel on a plain old wheel mouse. So nothing, nothing tricky here. Nothing unusual. No special anything. Just taking my time to do a careful job. And this really comes down to whenever you're doing this kind of cleanup of a picture and making selections, it really just comes down to taking your time to do a good job. Okay, that's all fine. We go back up here to the beginning again, which is right around there. I've now removed that bit. I've actually added that bit to my selection. So I can now go back to the eraser tool. And let's finish up our cleanup in here. Here we go, just kind of erasing around that intersection. So what we're doing is we're removing the background and the spokes out of this. And then we'll come back in and put in some new spokes that we have more control over. That also means that we don't have to try to mask around those individual spokes. Okay, let's just back out just a little bit here. I'll hold the Alt key down, we'll just back out a touch. Looks pretty good. Let's deselect that. Looks nice and clean. I think we have that wheel done. So I'll do the exact same thing now on the back wheel. Notice this one is a little more complicated. I have some more stuff showing through here, you know, down here, in here, over here. A little bit right there, a little bit of these things kind of showing through, and the stuff down in here to get rid of. And on these areas, you can either come in and make little selections to do that, or just use a, a little real small eraser and just erase just following that shape. And then you should be fine. 
out here I'll do the exact same trick again. So just a little more of this selection and cleanup and I'll do that off camera to save you the time so you don't have to you watch me doing all this excess stuff down here. So I'm going to pause the video again and then I'll bring it back up again once I have cleaned out the background and the spokes from the back wheel. Okay, there we go. I've cleaned out the back area. Let's now hold off on the spokes just for a little bit. I want to show you our next step. We'll do it on the front wheel here and then I'll do the back wheel off camera again. And that is the edge down here. Notice how it has this light halo around it. That's because we had brightness back there and it was bleeding around the edge of that. And I could come in here with an eraser tool and try to erase in really carefully on that edge and get rid of that. But I'm going to lose a little bit of the knobby shape and I want to have that knobby shape. So we're going to be doing a couple of things here on this. Make sure that you're on the correct layer up there, your background layer. Over here, we have three tools underneath this little icon. We have the burn tool. This will make things darker. We have the dodge tool, makes things, things lighter. This actually removes exposure, adds exposure. And then this sponge tool, this removes or increases values, color values. Right now it's set at saturate. I'm going to move this to desaturate. I'll be taking out color. And I can now come in here and just kind of paint over the edges. And I'll be taking out that orange color. I don't really need that. Up here I could leave a little bit of this because we have some orange up there. This could be a little bit of light coming off of that. So it's not as critical on the top of the wheel. I won't even bother with anything else up there. But down below here I want to get rid of that orange effect. So I'll use this desaturate. Again that's the sponge tool and desaturate and just kind of painting over that. I can increase my flow right down here, make it go faster. And as you can change the brush size right there. So anywhere where this is on a dark area, I want to make sure I don't have any color in there. We're then going to darken down that outside rim and get rid of that little bit of a halo effect. Notice once we get onto the light up there, you don't even see that any longer, so that light area is just fine. Okay, we've now cleaned that. I've, I've removed the color out of that. Let's now go here to the burn tool. You can do shadows, highlights, or midtones. You can adjust your exposure. I'm going to bring the size down pretty small here. I'm just going to paint right along the edge, and notice how it darkens down that edge. So I'll just go around the edge now and darken down that outer edge, just increasing the exposure, and that gets rid of that halo effect, making it look far more natural. Luckily this is a, a black wheel, obviously, so this trick works out very, very well. This works out great on some things, it doesn't work at all on other things, it depends upon what it is that you're masking. If what you're doing can naturally go to a darker value, then this is a great technique. If what you're doing goes to, to a lighter value naturally, I would simply use this tool instead, the dodge tool, and that would lighten it up instead of darkening it down. So we'll do a little bit of this. And we're going to come back and we're going to do a little more on this wheel later on. I'm going to darken down the whole wheel as well, just a bit, give it a little more contrast because one of the things that we're looking for is a a more vibrant picture. Okay, it's doing just a little bit up here. I don't, I don't need much here because they have the light background in there. Okay, so now we have removed that edge. A couple spots that are hard even able to see. So that looks good. If we go over here to the other wheel, the other tire, you can see there it is without that trick. Kind of the halo effect. And there it is with. Let's zoom out so you can see both wheels at once. I'll hold the Alt key down there. So there you go. There is the tire where you first remove the color and then darken down that edge. Looks great. Here it is without that done. Doesn't look as good. I'm going to do a little more on this just to make this 
tire more interesting. Let's go back here. I'm going to increase the size of my brush so it's up about the right size for the tire, just about like that. Decrease my exposure a little bit. And I'm just going to do just a little bit around the tire, just darkening down the tire a bit. There we go. Not much. Just like that, making the tire look a little bit richer in value. There we go. So it still looks good. If I make this image here fit on screen, you see now how the front tire is really matching the darkness of the bottom area of our picture and feels correct. We've gotten rid of that highlight and we darkened down the tire just a little bit. That's how the back tire is kind of just, just sitting there, it's kind of standing out as if it's not really part of this picture. Everything else looks okay, but we'll be working with everything else with another trick in just a little bit. So I'm going to now pause the video and I'll do the exact same steps here on the back tire that I just did on the front tire so that both tires then match. And then I'll bring the video right back up. All right, there we go. I've now made the back tire match the front tire and they now blend into the picture far better than they did before. We've darkened them down, which kind of matches the darker bottom area of this picture. So that's all good. All of our selections are done. Our edges are nice and clean. We've cleaned up the tires. We're now ready to put in our fake spokes. Now, to put them back in the right place, what I'll be doing is showing the background layer here, hiding that layer. We don't need that any longer. And we'll just come in here and actually draw in our spokes. So we'll be using the line tool right down here. We can choose a color off of the line tool. You can choose, as you can see here, all kinds of colors if you want to from this. We have some other options as well. I'm just going to choose kind of a medium gray value. Let's just take a look at our spokes. Actually, they look pretty dark in there. You can see it looks kind of medium value here. It's pretty dark over here. So we'll do a, a medium to medium dark on that. Maybe something in around there is 60% gray. That should work out pretty well. Now, when you draw lines, you can have them have arrowheads. We don't want to have any arrowheads. We just want to have just straight lines. You don't want to have any style on this, so no styling. Just a nice, basic, thin line. Okay, let's zoom in on one of these. Now, keep in mind that we are drawing here on that background layer. I'm going to put a new layer above that. There we go, layer two. We're going to draw on layer two so my spokes are above this, just to make it easy to see. We're actually going to move it underneath in just a little bit. So let's grab our line tool and click where you want to start and you can pull it out like that and in where you want to finish. Notice that this is the thickness of the line. Right now it's set at 20 pixels. So we're going to go a lot smaller than that. Let's just undo that line tool. Let's try setting this at 2 and let's see what we get. That looks pretty good. Here we go. Let's just see how that looks. If we deselect that, there we go. There's that that line in there. That looks nice. Okay, let's go back here to our line tool again. Come down for our next spoke. Draw that in in the next spoke. Now notice up on the layers up here that these are each one I. I draw comes in as its own shape. So we'll be combining these layers together once we have our spokes all drawn in. Now don't worry about being absolutely perfectly accurate about this. It, it's not that critical. Most important part is the part right down here towards the wheel. You want to have those spaced properly. Notice that some of the spokes we can't even see. They're, they just disappear. Now these are coming in, as you can see, they're too hard. We'll be fixing that in just a little bit. We'll actually be blurring out our spokes a little bit once we have these in place. So it's just a matter now of going through and drawing in all these spokes. Now remember, we actually have spoke lines showing where it's crossing over this, 
this stuff here. So I'm just drawing them. We're going to be putting them in behind, but that information where it crosses something in front, that's still in the in our picture. So we're okay there. And again, I'll just come down through and we'll finish off putting in our spokes, following the spokes on the original image. Again, hard to see sometimes in here exactly where these things are. It's really not going to matter. You'll see what I mean once we get this stage finished. And again, just a matter of just going through and putting back in all of our spokes. Okay, there we go. We have replaced those spokes. They look pretty good. Don't worry about that stuff. That's not going to be showing. Okay, now we have all of these shapes over here on the right-hand side. I actually have 36 shapes. So our top one is selected. I'll scroll down here to the bottom one. Hold the Shift key and select all of those. Let's right-click and Merge Shapes. That puts them all into one layer. If I move this underneath this picture now, notice how those give us a nice clean edge because they've now been moved in behind. And here's the actual spoke picture, and here's our new fake spoke picture. That's an actual spoke, a little bit of fake spoke in here. Fake spoke, actual spoke, fake spoke. See, see how they're they're blending together very nicely. This is the fake spoke. There's the actual spoke because it's on that bit of a picture. Okay, so that looks good. Of course, I'll be doing the same thing on the back wheel off camera. But let's take this now to the next step. The spokes look kind of fake at this point, especially if I bring in this background. They look pretty fake. We don't want to have that fake look on these things. So we need to fuzz the spokes out a little bit. I'm just going to zoom out just a touch. There we go. And we're going to be using one of our filters up here. And that is a blur filter. We have a radial blur. This spins the picture in a circle. Now, one thing about this radial blur. First off, as you can see here, we need to have this as a rasterized layer. That's fine. You can either do it at this point or just you know, right click and choose a rasterized layer. The problem with this is it's going to spin the whole picture and we don't want that. We just want to spin just those spokes, not the whole thing. And it's going to center the spin on the middle of the picture. Our spokes are centered over here someplace. So what you need to do, and this is one of my little little tricks here, go over to the elliptical marquee, and I'm going to draw a marquee right around the spokes like that. And now when I apply this filter, it's only going to be applied within this area. And it's only being applied on our layer with our spokes. Let me just rename this here. I call this one front spokes. So it's pretty easy to see. There's our front spokes layer. And let me make sure that we are simplified. There we go. Rasterizing, same thing. Okay, so we have that done. Layer simplified. We're now going to give this a little bit of a spin. Filter, blur, radial blur. And let's just try just about three and see what happens. Now notice we can't actually get a preview on this. There's no preview on this very, very old style filter. So you have to try it. If you don't like it, then hit the undo. So we'll go OK. There we go. Just a little bit of blurring. And I think that's fine. There's enough in there. We can see that it spokes, but it's blurring out. So you get the sense that there is some motion happening on that. It happened right around there. So that one is done. Let's just deselect that. So we put our spokes back in again. So that's you know how to handle that spoke problem. Now I'm going to pause the video and I'll do the exact same thing back here on the back wheel. And as soon as that's done, I'll bring the video back up again. Okay, that back wheel is now done. Now at this point, we're almost finished actually with this whole thing. If you 
are not happy with your spokes if they're looking like they're too apparent like this is you know this is pretty easy to see these because of the real dark background the front's a little more natural if you want a little more blur just go ahead and spin that a second time you can just reapply that I'll just show you that here I'm gonna put a new marquee around that the last filter you used will always be at the top of your filter list here just hit that a second time and go ahead and redo that or we can try to spin that at a different amount Let's try taking this up to six. There we go, a little softer. I think that looks better there. So get your spokes where you want them, and that's all ready to go. Now the last thing we want to do is we want to make the rider up here a lot more vibrant, a lot more exciting on the coloration. And we can do that by using our blending modes up here. I'm going to take this background copy, this is our motorcycle. Let me just rename this now let's call it cyclist there we go let's drag this up to the new layer button right there that makes a copy of that we can now use a blending mode to blend this copy into this copy now these blending modes do all kinds of stuff let me just go down through these here's dissolve nothing really shows darken nothing really shows on this multiply though takes the top and multiplies those with the bottom and you get a much darker image so some of these will get will give you a change on your image color burn there you go really really dramatic linear burn darker color lightens not doing much screen really lightens it up looks like he's been flashed with a, a flash color dodge giving you a real vibrant look there if you like that linear dodge so you can just go down through these and see what the effect is and we'll be using this one here called overlay if I hide this one layer there it is without and there it is with that new layer so there is the original motorcyclist and here it is with the same thing just copied on top and then overlaid and it makes all the colors a lot richer so there we go there's our exciting motorcyclist and you can see how this looks just bring the background in here I'm just gonna hide everything there you go there's our original it's not a bad shot the backgrounds obviously boring the bike you know the motorcyclist could have a little more interest to them but we you know add in all of our new elements in here and there we go a much more vibrant picture all done here fairly straightforward it's just requires taking the time to approach it and solve all those little problems that we had to end up with this nice image something else that's nice about this is because the image the background here is totally separate I can put any background I want in here and even try different backgrounds because the, the motorcyclist has been nicely cleaned out he'll go on to anything in the background I chose this because it has a nice bright spot right behind the bike and the colors kind of match so I kind of like that one shot but you know any background well, you can try just drop it in there and see how it looks so there we go that is how to do the motorcyclist okay I'm gonna finish this discussion up just by going over a few other little details here answering a few questions that I've had about this particular technique first off is the tools that I used to clean out the background to remove that background it's really just a personal preference and we have several tools that you can use here you can use the different marquee tools in here rectangular and elliptical to cut out big chunks of the background if you want to it's kind of a fast way to do it on the lasso tools we have the freehand lasso tool polygonal lasso tool I just happen to like that one because it's easy to control you click and then go to your next spot click go to your next spot and it just fills the lines in for you so it's pretty easy to control this one the magnetic lasso tool I'm not a real big fan of this one tool it does work on occasion but you need to have a really good separation between your foreground and your background to make that work on all these tools of course I can have a softer effect a softer edge by feathering it slightly just a little bit of feathering in here gives you kind of a soft edge on that and don't forget in here you can as we saw you can actually sub have an existing selection and then take out parts of that selection by using the subtract by default it just gives you a new selection like that but again it's a personal preference as to which one you use to go in here and work with that 
We also could use the eraser tool, background eraser tool, or the magic eraser tool. I Again, I don't really like these tools that much. I don't think they do that great of a job. If it's a real definite distinct separation between your foreground and your background, then you can get by with using some of these things. But if your separation is not that distinct, these may take out more than you want or not take out enough. So you know, that's why I tend to gravitate towards the polygonal lasso tool. It's, again, it's just my personal favorite for this kind of work. One, one thing over here, one thought over here on this, if you don't like how much this new layer is affecting the underneath layer, if, if that is too much of a change, if it's too drastic for you, you can control that by controlling the opacity of that top layer. If I bring the opacity down, it gives me a little less of that effect. You can see here it is with no effect, and I'm going to just bring in a little bit of the effect up here so I can choose exactly how much of this effect I want to have in here. Now this kind of effect, just, you're going to see, if you watch this carefully, it's going to mostly affect the mid to dark tones. So the reds get a little more vibrant, but the mid to dark tones really show some effect, especially the wheels, really show some effect in here. The blues go a lot more vibrant, and then your dark areas go darker. Your light areas don't do that much. So again, you can use these overlays. There's a lot of different blending modes you can try, see which ones you like, and then you can adjust the amount of that effect by adjusting the opacity of the layer that you're applying that effect onto. And what it's doing is it's taking this and then blending this into what's beneath it based upon the particular technique. Okay, so there we go. That is creating an exciting motorcyclist picture. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this training video.